you know, in the I got vaccinated video, I saw a lot of comments talking about personal freedom. I saw a lot of comments talking about I am not going to give up my liberties. I am not going to be part of this grand agenda. And I actually thought that you clowns were foolish because privacy is a facade. Yeah, it is. And you willingly give up your privacy for convenience. My YouTube analytics tells me that the majority of y'all watch me on your cell phone. Now, the cell phone is very interesting. This hands down is the main reason that you don't have privacy. Every time you download an app, every time you allow an app to be put on your phone, there is language uh, there is language on the app giving them permission to go through your your phone. There's language in the app that's saying, hey, by downloading this app, you grant us permission to go through your phone. Like if you've ever noticed, like when you download Snapchat, it goes through your contact list and tells you the people who are already on Snapchat. Also, the same device, right? It tracks your every move. Like, um, it is hooked up because with my car, I have Apple Play and everything. So whenever I park my car, it says your car is parked here. I've never actually programmed that into the phone. This phone tracks your every movement. And also, for you privacy bugs, uh, unless you turn your phone off or put your phone outside, your phone is listening to everything that you say and do. There was this big brouhaha, I think it was Ring, where, or Ring or one of these apps, where the people were monitoring the things and they were seeing people have sex. People who thought that they were in the comfort and privacy of their own home, they were on someone's screen top, umni and moaning. So unless you're getting ready to ditch your phones, ditch your apps, you absolutely have no privacy. None. Now, you know, well, one of the things that cracks me up with a lot of you folks who are talking about, you know, you're taking the vaccine, you're a drone. Really? You got, most of y'all have jobs out there. The majority of y'all have jobs. I have been a free man for the last 22 years. I have worked for myself for the last 22 years. So I find it hilarious and downright funny that someone who has a job, who has to be granted permission to take a vacation. In some cases, some of you have jobs where you have to ask permission to go to the bathroom. And you thinking, I'm a drone because I took a vaccine when you got a job. When the only time you could be free is on the weekend, only time that you feel like you got some money is because of the stimulus money. Only time you feel like a baller because of the stimulus money. Yet I'm a drone because I took the vaccine. And also, people, this injection propaganda. I am a free agent. I decided to take the vaccine because I'm going to be out more. I'm going to be doing more things. And I just thought it was a good thing for me. Like, once again, if you want to take it or don't want to take it, that really doesn't matter to me. I'm just here on this YouTube channel. And this is something I have a history of doing. I've been doing this for years, talking about what's going on in my personal life. So miss me with all that. Well, you should just stick to business content. Really? 
when I stick to business content, there is a core group of loyal viewers who watch all of those videos. And I appreciate you guys. But, the re but most of you drones, worker bees who have jobs, who need permission to go to the bathroom, who need permission to take vacation, uh, y'all only watch this stuff. So that, that, that is pretty funny. And if you don't like the content of this channel, and you don't like what I'm talking about, you can choose to stop watching. I am amazed at how many people have, who want me to be what they want me to be versus me being who I am. I mean, the things I get to push back on, paying cash for a car, good financial sense. I've got so much pushback on that because y'all want to finance a car. And th this is one of the things, and this kind of goes back to privacy and freedoms. How free are you when you're addicted to credit? How free are you when a three digit score can send you into an anxiety attack if someone has some, like I was a victim of identity theft. I don't think I ever talked about this. And someone got like $400,000 worth of credit in my name. In addition to buying a house. I mean, this happened a few years ago and it still kind of crops up. And, you know, my score, my score tanked. I had to file police reports. I had to talk to people. I had to talk to the creditors. It's like, that ain't me. Um, and eventually, after about 18 months, got it resolved. Now, uh, I got a comment on Savage Finance talking about, you know, most people can't save enough money. You got to finance some stuff. If I didn't have a business and I didn't have the high income that I have, those 18 months could have been financial hell. Because my credit score went down to like 400 because they went out and charged all this stuff. They didn't pay it. And then the house, which was real interesting. They got the house. They were living in the house and they tried to sell the house. And that's where they got caught because essentially they were able to forge and finagle my name and ID and stuff to buy the house. But when they were selling it, this is when they caught them and essentially they got arrested but i at the time you know i had bad credit even though it wasn't of my own doing i had bad credit did my life change nope did i miss out on doing what i wanted to do nope no it didn't happen matter of fact this was 2000 17, 16, 15, when this happened, and I bought a brand new vehicle and I paid cash. Um, I was able to get a house and I showed them my bank statements. And even though my, my credit report was jacked up and I explained that it wasn't me, I'm a victim of identity theft and I was able to you know prove it to them. I was able to make all these kind of moves because I was making cash. And all of you credit Beagles, uh, I gotta have a 758 credit score. Let me go ahead and, like, once again, prove me wrong. You got a 750 credit score, let me go out and see you get $250,000 in credit in the current economic environment. I've had a few people like, I did it, they didn't do it recently. You're not gonna be able to do it today. And you're not gonna, and, well, mark my words, once these credit card issuers get hold of Plaid, which is plaid is they're going to start checking your banking activity to verify your income. And once that happens, stated income goes out the window. It goes out the window. I got a video on Savage Finance talking about the myth of the average person getting rich with real estate. It is a myth. Everyone on YouTube that is really getting rich with real estate ain't average. They're not average, not even close to average. And also this whole notion of buying a house, 
living in it for two years, then moving out, then renting that house, then buying another house. Because essentially, in 10 years, you can get roughly five or six properties this way. You can do that. And, you know, uh, I got a video on Savage Finance talking about the, the cash flow. And there's a guy in Texas. He has 11 rentals, no, 10 rentals or one personal residence. And his cash flow from 10 rentals is only 2,500 bucks per month. He could not live the way he's living on 2,500 bucks per month. He couldn't do it. So one of the things I like to do on this channel is kill sacred cows. Like, you know, I just told you, my credit was trash. And, and what, what was funny was some of my traditional credit cards that I had, they actually canceled my credit card account. I wrote them a letter and then we got them, the cards had reinstated, but it was rough. And if I did not have cash money to live my life to, you know, I mean, I virtually eat out every day. I, I, there are certain habits that I have that are not typical. Um, and you know what's funny? Even though I eat out every day, because I make so much money, it doesn't matter. And this is one of the things that I'm trying to impress on you guys at Savage Finance. It's about income. It's not about your credit score. It's not about being pathologically cheap. That video is coming up. That's going to be a doozy. Um, it is not about, because essentially everyone that I've seen that is rich or well off didn't get there by being cheap. Didn't get there by being cheap. But, you know, once again, it's kind of like the mindset and the way that people think and the way that people um, look at certain things. Because, like I said, this whole notion of privacy, if you have one of these and you use it quite a bit, you absolutely have given up your rights to privacy. This phone has a record, a log of every place that you have visited. If you ever watched um, Law and Order SUV, how many times they, they got a criminal because of their cell phone in their pocket? This phone tracks everywhere you go everything you do and I believe there is a massive database government backed database that is listening to all of our phone calls and listening to us when the phone is off I believe that microphone is on I think there is no such thing as privacy in 2021 you could unless you want to cut the cord you want to cut um, the cell phones. You want to log out of your internet. And that's another thing. Your internet also tracks you. Your IPI, your IPI, IP address, whatever that is called. It tracks you. It tracks all of your websites. Right now, someone could take your phone in your internet history and create a psychological profile about you that would be very accurate. So all of you guys are like, oh, it's about privacy and personal freedoms. If you have a job, you really don't have no personal freedom. You have someone telling you what time you gotta come to work. You have someone telling you what time you get off. You have someone telling you what time you can go on vacation, if you can go on vacation. You also have someone who is watching everything you do, even if you work at home, they're monitoring your screen time. You are not free, which kind of brings up an issue. And this is something I've been thinking about. Um, 
one of the reasons that I get so much pushback, and it isn't from the women folk, it is really rare that I would have an issue with women. I, I mean, I've put all types of stuff on this channel. And it is, you know, every now and then, it'll be a woman who will pop up and say something. But 99% of the disgruntled dissenters are male. And they're black males. I don't get this from white males. I don't get this from Asian males. It's from black males. And I represent to you something that you feel that you cannot obtain. And that's one of the laws of 48 laws of power to hate what you cannot be. You hate that what you ever have. And that's why I get this. And I'm here to tell you something, bruh. If you would stop being a little pussy and grab your balls and go out into the world and roar and say, I am somebody. I'm going to sell products to white folks. I'm going to do this. Put that in your mind. Instead of hating on me because I'm doing things you feel. Notice the operating word is you feel that you cannot do. See, I'm about to go ahead and hip you to some stuff. Your mental environment, the way that you think and where do you live? Where you live has a big, big impact on your mental environment. It's massive. This is one of the reasons I live out here, because I live in an environment of wealth and this influences my mental environment. But instead of hating on me, because I will get and also for those of you who feel that you're richer than me, please prove it. Don't just say it in the comments. And then I go to your YouTube channel and I see that you're watching World Star. I don't see anything that denotes any level of wealth. Nothing. And I mean, it's the Internet, man. I remember years ago, there was this meme. And if you remember the dog body, what is this? It was the old record player with this big funnel. And there's this little dog with black spots. And it's like on the Internet, no one knows I'm a dog. And th this is like, like I said, this is one of the reasons I show receipts. And this is one of the reasons that a lot of people hate because they're feel once again I'm about to tell you something to all you weak moist men if you were to get your mental together get your mental together I'm gonna tell you something that happened the other day and I was just kind of feeling myself when I was getting my vaccination there was this cute girl and I actually went over and introduced myself and I say hey, we need to go out and you know what she agreed during the pandemic Macking during the pandemic, you know, it like so many of you would not ever do nothing like that. You will see a girl and you'd be like, man, mm, she's cute and you will never, ever speak to her. That mental weakness has got to go because essentially I did the video about research. Because a lot of you don't know how to do research and it isn't because you're dumb. It's just like your school in the methodology of how to conduct research. And this shows when you come after me because, you know, I spend half of my time doing research. And this is one of the things I've noticed, like with YouTube. Um, I got a new tactic that's about to go down at Savage Finance. I've been thinking about it for about a week and I'm about to do it based upon research. One of the things you can see here on YouTube is someone can blow up talking about stock, money, and they don't really have to be that financially successful. I know that's shocking, but they really don't have to be that fine. They have to have like a little bit of financial success. And they can leverage that into massive YouTube income. Massive. And, you know, YouTube is really interesting. I found a channel the other day. And this guy has a really nice theme. It's three months old and he's got 1.9 million subscribers. You know what it's about? Subway sandwiches. All the video is him just making Subway sandwiches and telling stories. And he blew up. And I have studied that and I've studied that because I know 
stories work really well on YouTube. I've known that for a long time. So we're going to get into more stories because I'm going to tell the time that was a victim of identity fraud because I haven't never talked about that before. And that that was wild. That was that was wild. And if I did not have and I didn't have the cash flow that I have now and it didn't really impact my life because typically I don't finance stuff. I don't finance cars. And it was a little tricky getting the house with all that going down. It was a little tricky, but because I was able to provide bank statements and I provide the police reports, I was able to go through with the house. Bank statements are incredibly powerful when you're trying to do certain things. But one of the things that I want you guys to understand, especially you privacy advocates, you need to cut the cell phone off. You need to use the internet with a VPN and you need to go live up in the mountains and you need to unplug from society because this is what's going to happen. Remember the movie Minority Report where they were so dialed in that they would arrest you before you did the crime. We're going to be in a point where everything, you know, Right now, the cell phone is tracking everything. And what's going to happen is the cell phone is going to start interfacing with everything. Like when Amazon creates these stores where you just walk in, pick stuff up, and walk out. You, uh, you've got to understand how much technology is going to go into that. There's going to be facial recognition software. Because essentially, when you walk in the store, it's going to log who you are. It's going to scan your face, it's going to scan your phone, and it's going to create a profile for you. And every time you go in that store, it's going to bring up your profile, and it's going to look at your shopping habits. Everything you put in the cart, it's going to record, and it's going to create a customer profile on you. And also, when you go in the store, it's going to monitor the times that you come into the store, it's going to monitor what you buy. It's going to monitor what you wear. I know you're like, what? Because what's going to happen is when Amazon gets all this together, because the Amazon ain't even where they're, they're going to be yet. They're going to see what you wear and then they're going to interface with your phone. And since you went to the Amazon website, they're going to start sending you notifications and messaging about certain apparel, certain shoes, I mean, what's, what's going to happen with e-commerce in the future is going to rock your, I mean, and this is going to require that you give up a lot of freedom. And you're going to give up this freedom to have this convenience. One of the things, like me, since I was in the military, and I, I, I've had background checks, I am already in the matrix. I, I mean... It's going to be real hard for me to get out the matrix because I'm 54 years old. I've been in the matrix for many decades. I've been in the matrix since 18. So I'm not really concerned about privacy and I'm not really concerned about the facade of freedom because if you have a job, you ain't free, bro or sis, you ain't free. Um, the thing I'm in really interested about is economic freedom the ability to do what you want to live how you want to live where you want to drive where you want to eat what you want that's what i'm interested in and to me even in the matrix there's a if you remember the movie the matrix there was compartments of sub matrixes within the matrix that these guys had freedom and that's what i am i i'm in the matrix make no mistake about it that's why I laugh at you clowns who's like, personal freedoms, our rights. Yet, you're walking around with this in your pocket every day. It's tracking your every move. It's plotting everything you do. And what's going to happen is um, what's going to happen is that you 
are going, they're going to start doing something that's called predictive analysis. Because that's, that's going to be the game changer. The companies that are working on predictive analysis, they're going to have, because right now, let's, this is a little business lesson. Dell, what made Dell so powerful in the computer world is they had just-in-time sourcing. Dell did not have a bunch of inventory just laying around. And essentially, they would have just-in-time supplies coming in. And what would happen is the suppliers, if they were late, they had to pay these heavy financial fines because it was so tightly interlaced. And what we're going to do, because we're already halfway there, but what's going to happen is they're going to create models based upon your shopping, based upon what you are, to predict your next move. And then to be there with just-in-time services, products, and whatever you need. This is coming. And you're going to go for it because it's going to be hella convenient. It's going to be so convenient. You're going to knock yourself out for doing this stuff. And it just cracks me up, all of you people. And like cryptocurrency, I think once cryptocurrency gets to a certain level, it's going to be banned. And I know there are many of you, it's like, they can't ban it, they won't ban it. Um, many of you have not been around long enough to see what happens. Recently, Prince Albert died. Dude was born in 1921. He was almost 100 years old. Almost 100 years old. This dude saw the telephone go from the telephone to the mobile phone to the internet. You have to see, I mean, dude grew up in a world where refrigeration and sanitation wasn't normal. I mean, this dude, in his life, he saw massive, massive change. And what we're going to see is more massive change. So all you freedom hawks, unless you're living in the desert and using solar power in a VPN to do your web research, and you're not on the cell phone or you have an old flip phone, you have no privacy. None. Right now, like all these apps, like Waze, the navigation app, that charts all your moves. I mean, it is a joke to think that you feel that you have privacy when you have a job and you have a cell phone. That is cracking me up, that you think that you have privacy when you have a job and a cell phone. You have no privacy, none. And it's going to get worse. It's gonna get much worse unless you decide to check out Go build yourself a log cabin in the woods and do that. That's where you're going to be. That's where you're going to be. Um, you're going to be. That's the only way you're going to get out of this. And what's going to happen. And one of the reasons that solitary confinement is considered unlawful punishment is Humans don't do well in isolation. You would have to be have to have a different psychological profile to live alone and not interact with other humans. And most of us, there are some people who are like that, who can go in the woods, be by themselves for 20, 30 years and be perfectly fine from a mental standpoint. But the majority of us look at what happened during this pandemic. Look at what happened. Suicide rate skyrocketed. The suicide rate went bananas because people couldn't go out and mix and mingle. The suicide rate, people like, hey. So like I said, the suicide rate skyrocketed. Um, people were losing it. Social isolation was driving people crazy. Um, humans don't do well in isolation, most of us. Most of us are psychologically rigged to be. And when I used to work in a hospital, I noticed that how babies would respond to the nurses. Like you have a little baby, a little dude up in this little bassinet, freaking out, and the nurse goes ahead and picks him up, instantly calms down. And yeah, I saw this over and over and over again. And this is why MIG toe and red pill 
is preaching anti-social behavior, which in the, is not going to impact most of society. There could be a subculture of MGTOW and red pill men, but most men are never going to be red pill. Most men are never going to be MGTOW. The majority of them aren't. And also, I came across this YouTube channel where this guy was talking about millennials and how millennials don't have any hobbies and they're just, they're like dead. It's real interesting. I need to put that below. But we're, we're gonna be having some conversations here because this, this thing with you guys and the personal freedoms and you know, I used to have this joke, a rebel with a job. Like, I know this is going to sound very condescending, but most of you guys are drones in the matrix. You have jobs, you have cell phones, you, are, you act on convenience, and the stimulus check really showed me that America is ready for socialism. America's ready for socialism. I suspect that we're gonna have a form of universal basic income in the next five years. Because what's about to happen with automation is it's going to, automation is gonna get rid of so many jobs in the next five years, it's gonna literally blow your minds. It's literally gonna blow your minds. And one of the things that people don't understand is, you know, chasing Bitcoin. As someone was talking about, well, you've been right about a lot of stuff, but you're wrong about Bitcoin. Bitcoin has been pumping for like four months. Historically, Bitcoin crashes. And I feel that Bitcoin is going to crash again. And I guarantee you, when it crashes, this person is going to go, hey, Glennon, you were right. I'm not going to hear that. And also, not that many of you actually own Bitcoin. Um, essentially, if you didn't buy Bitcoin early, you kind of missed the boat. And that's something that, once again, all these people with these cryptocurrency channels, they want you they need you to join them so you can push up the price of cryptocurrency. They're not trying to help you out. They're trying to help themselves out. I am one of the few people who's been vocal where, once again, if you're in the danger zone, make it less than $50,000 a year, and you got a lot of debt, investing in stock, investing in Bitcoin, it's not gonna serve you well. I'm one of the people who's come up with this thesis, these data points that's backed up by math and statistics. Because essentially only 1% of the world, not even 1%, less than half a percent of the world owns cryptocurrency. If you go to the westernized world, almost 2% of the westernized world, Western world, which is about 3 billion people. This is United States, Canada, Europe, Japan, Korea, Australia, 3 billion people, less than 2% own crypto. So this mass adaptation of crypto ain't going to happen no time soon. Also, crypt electric cars. I have a lot of people say, like, you know, we're, we're not going to be driving gas powered cars in, uh, in five or 10 years. Once again, you guys don't know how to do research. Currently, there's 1.4 billion cars on the road. Electric cars represent 1% of those 1.4 billion cars. New car sales are like 73 million cars a year. What percent of those car sales are electric? Less than 1%. So even if there was a mandate in 2035 where these car these manufacturers were going to um, produce electric cars it would still take another decade and a half to get all the gas powered cars off the road gas powered cars are not going nowhere in the next 25 years they're not going anywhere people will still be riding them still driving them and many of you future hawks are the first group of people to give up all of your privacy all of it willingly for convenience and the future you have no problems giving up your privacy so it is real interesting 
how people come at me with sloppy, inaccurate research and um, it's funny. It is funny. So one of the things that you guys have got to understand that from an economic standpoint, you need to start a business. If you're in danger zone number one, danger zone number one is $50,000 a year and less. Danger zone number two is $100,000 a year and less. Now, if you're in danger zone number three, 150 to 200,000, you can deploy some of your salary. You can deploy 50, $60,000 a year of your salary into investments and become quite wealthy. You, you're in that position to do that because you make so much money. But if you're in danger zone number one and don't, you, you don't have enough money to really become an investor of significance. I'm the only one that's talking about this. It's like, hey, get in the stock market. So you go ahead and you get in the stock market and you make it $35,000 a year. And I literally exploded a lie. This guy did a video talking about this guy got a $70 million portfolio with a $14,000 a year salary. Except he left out that 14,000 adjusted for inflation was like 130. And this guy was investing like $3,000 a month of his salary adjusted for inflation. So he was ingesting, he was investing more money per month than the average person made in America. Once again, you can check me on this all the time, but the top 10%, it creates an illusion of things that aren't what you think they are because you're not digging deeper. Like this whole notion, like real estate, you can have a better net worth. And once again, make the mistake. If you want to get in real estate, go ahead and get in real estate. I mean, it would be better to have one or two houses than not to have one or two houses. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you're not going to make the money you think you're going to make. That's what I'm saying. Unless you have a business that creates a lot of cash flow where you can deploy into your investments. Because I'm serious. Uh, I have seen a lot of people get into real estate and lose their booty and lose their booty. So we're going to be having these more conversations like this, call them treadmill conversations. Cause you know, I got sick in um, March, February, and I just completely fell out of my workout routine. So I'm going to work out and I'm going to make videos. Can't do it when I'm lifting weights or maybe I can. I don't know. So we're going to see. I'm, 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 I'm about to try a whole bunch of different things. There's a lot of different stuff that's coming. So once again, if you want to escape the danger zone, number one, if you want to become a corporate citizen, I'm getting ready to do some different kind of stuff. I'm getting ready to put it out. So the price of the art of holding has will not go up until May. So you can get into the fast um, business boot camp, and you can get a, take advantage of some other stuff. Links below. So that's all I got for you guys. Let me know what you think of freedom and privacy. Now that I've explained to you that if you're walking around with a cell phone in your pocket, your every move is being tracked, your every internet search is being recorded, and literally your phone and Alexa. Hey Alexa, play she a bad thing. Alexa, off. Alexa is listening to me all the time. Alexa's always on. So for you guys who think that you got some privacy, ha ha! No, you don't. Not if you walk around with a cell phone player. Not at all. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next one.